Welcome back. My name is Candace Sanderson. When I published my two books in 2018 and the second one in 2020, I only used about a quarter of the material that I have in my journals. So now and then I like to open my online journal and just scroll through until I hit some random page. And every time I do this, I'm pleasantly surprised. It seems that my experiences maybe had unlocked these passages to the non-physical, but the doors were not necessarily open. I had not yet crossed that threshold to see what was on the other side. So as I scan my journal, I'm discovering some real hidden gems from my past experiences. What I want to do today is to share something from July 21st, 2015. I was at Monroe Institute attending a program called Exploration 27, or we refer to it by just saying X27. Bob Monroe used the term focus levels to describe different states of expanded awareness. Focus 27 is what is often referred to as the park. Sometimes it's referred to as the reception center, but it's that way station for those who have currently crossed over. It's the first place they go once they've made their final transition. Now, many things take place here in Focus 27. There are centers for healing and regeneration. There's a place where you can meet with intelligent beings. They're the ones that are still connected to the earth system and they kind of supervise what's going on. But this is a fabulous program and it's filled with so much excitement and wonder. But during Focus 27, during the program, and I'm at the main campus at Monroe, I'm in the mountains of Virginia. One morning I woke up dressed, I grabbed my phone and I stepped outside to take an early morning walk. Mid-July in South Florida where I live is scorching and so humid this time of year, but not so in these Blue Ridge Mountains. It was beautiful. It was literally a breath of fresh air as you just meet that beautiful, cool, damp morning breeze. No cars, no voices. I only heard the sounds of nature, insects buzzing by, birds chirping. It was absolutely heavenly. All of a sudden, I was called to a cluster of grass, a clump of grass, and I approached it slowly. And as I did, I just marveled at these beautiful, glistening drops of dew that were like shining from these deep green blades on the grass. It reminded me of stars that twinkle against a moonless night sky. Each drop of dew seemed to beckon. It was just calling me to get closer and closer. And so as I approached this clump of sparkling grass, I smiled because I knew the messengers were around. So. I opened up my telephone and recorded the following. But before I read the passage, since I'm going to describe something that happened at Monroe Institute, let me begin with Monroe's official disclaimer. These are my opinions and not representative of the Monroe Institute. Now, that being said, I'm going to share my disclaimer. In my opinion, I've heard others, many others, who have had similar experiences. So back to the message. July 21st, 2015. Awaken within, within, within. Let your true essence shine forth from within. Let it shine as it is meant to be. Now, this vision began in my mind's eye. I became aware of my true essence 
and it was in the form of a spark of light. I saw and felt it as it began to shrink, and I realized my true essence melted like a puddle of liquid light, and I saw it pool at the bottoms of my feet. And next, this silvery light glided toward this cluster of grass, that same cluster that had called to me. This pool of light penetrated the membrane of a single drop of dew. And the message continued, your true essence is formless and knows no space. We are calling to you to come within to find that spark of who you truly are. Allow that divine spark to shine forth for the world to see. Be a beacon, calling, calling, calling. Calling those who are awakening, calling to those who are ready to listen. Shine forth, dear one, for this most sacred journey has begun. With those words, that drop of dew releases my essence, and I feel myself, my true essence, pop out of this sacred space of that glistening orb of light. I felt so alive, so renewed. And I gave my heartfelt gratitude and thanks for this experience. This happened on a Tuesday morning. So it was close to mid-program of X27. I've been to enough programs at Monroe to fully appreciate the power of each and every program. Things happen with each program that you, you take with you, you bring home with you. You may not notice it in real time. I certainly didn't. I knew I was changing, but it was difficult to, to label the change. The specifics eluded description. And although I couldn't really define or explain what was occurring with each program, I certainly felt it. As X27 progressed that week, this drop of dew showed up in the exercises. Now, I have always been a note taker. And when I'm at Monroe, I just take these extensive notes. I reviewed them last week. And only then did I realize how significant the drop of dew was. This dew drop actually became a means of transportation for me. Like in the vision, when I found myself, my true essence inside that drop of dew, the same thing happened in the exercise, but it was no longer just a drop of dew. It became this beautiful, crystalline, shiny orb, and it could float and carry me at will wherever I needed to go. It was truly a vehicle that was transporting me throughout these non-physical realms of energy. I couldn't help but smile because I felt a lot like Glinda. Do you remember the good witch in The Wizard of Oz in the movie? How she shows up in that beautiful orb of light. But here I was through the exercises, rising in the sky and just going wherever I needed to go. This experience was something that I learned over time with the messengers. My spontaneous channeling began in August of 2013. And since then, so many of the visions I've had, I've realized sometimes later, much later, that the messengers were actually giving me tools that I could use at a later time. I mentioned this throughout the books, especially this first book, The Reluctant Messenger. In one of my YouTube channels, the one called The Reluctant Messenger Unleashed, host Donna Rebido and I discussed these tools quite frequently. 
The Reluctant Messenger Unleashed is a virtual book club and we cover The Reluctant Messenger chapter by chapter, sometimes page by page. And time and time again, we talk how my experiences often morph into tools for my consciousness awareness toolbox. We have the ladder of enlightenment and that allowed me to achieve what Bob Monroe used to call escape velocity. We learned about the POE, the point of existence and how we can use that. We can expand that in order to access the past and the future. We learned about using different types of sacred geometry in order to travel in these non-physical realms. And I could go on and on, but this message, I had not realized that drop of dew was a tool. I certainly used it as such, but this has been in my journal. I forgot about it. But when this became a means of transportation, a vehicle that allowed me to explore with ease the park, Focus 27, I realized now I can use this at any time. I didn't have to be at a program at Monroe. I can use it to freely travel without effort. Now, that's another one that I'm going to put into my consciousness awareness toolbox. Now it's time for the backstory. I've included part of this in my books, but not all of it. And although this encounter that I had with the dewdrop was during a very early morning walk, it was not the first message that I received that day, July 21st, 2015. At 4.44 that morning, now, first of all, let's step back. Those are magical angel numbers. And I looked it up real quickly before I recorded this. And an online site said the angel number 444 represents that you may already have a strong connection with angels and source and that you are on a path of spiritual awakening. Well, you know, that's true. This was 2015. I started channeling in 2013. And uh, when it also says you're on a path of spiritual awakening, I thought they got the awakening part right. It was 4.44 in the morning. Everyone should be asleep at that time. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go directly to my journal. Because this is what had set the stage for my dewdrop encounter. I'm going to read directly from what I had written. 4.44, I woke up. I had my journal and a pen right next to my bed. That's what I always do when I'm at Monroe because you never know when something magical happens and you want to document it. So I said, I am awakened with these thoughts that ache to be recorded. I gather my notebook and pen as the following spills forth from within. How do I explain the expansion of consciousness that I am experiencing this week. It is becoming closer to source, your higher self, angels, God, whatever words are comfortable with you to explain those sacred connections that your heart recognizes. Along with this comes a sense of freedom, of transformation, Formation. There is clarity on many issues and the mysteries of life. Now, first of all, I, I want to say something here. I don't talk like I awaken with these thoughts, not at 444 in the morning, and that ache to be recorded. That is so poetic. So I was not the one writing this. If I had been, I would have just written it. But this poetic language could only be from one source, that group of guides that I've known from the very beginning, the muses within. They're the ones who gave me my very first message about a flower. And 
I'm sure they are the ones who are pinning this through me. And also, did you notice when they talk about, they talk about um, whatever words are comfortable with you, all of a sudden they've changed the third person. So it's no longer, how do I explain this? So those are some, some big clues right, right along. But anyway, let me just finish this. Trying to put into words that which is indescribable, I am offered a few examples. Number one, there is lightness and an expansion of energy, which results in a freedom that is not known in most of our waking states. I am shown a beautiful, ripe peach. Our waking state is much like the pit contained within the peach. My center of awareness is now shifting from the pit to the outer skin of the peach. I now exist in a space between the individual minuscule hairs of the peach fuzz. This almost microscopic space surrounds me, freeing my existence from the self-imposed confines it once knew. It's like having an out-of-body experience where you shrink to such a small size. And it reminds me of that movie, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, where they're in, in this in their backyard and a blade of grass is this large. But I was like that with the peach fuzz. I was so tiny, but I realized I was not my physical body. But let me go on. The second example. The second example uses an analogy of the challenges with cell phone reception. You wander about asking, can you hear me now? Now, for those who have been around for a while, I think like back in the early 2000s, 2001, 2004, I don't know, there was a commercial that played all the time from Verizon Wireless. And, and this man was always saying, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? So this was, you know, part of that. Can you hear me now? And then the message, or they say, your call has been dropped. In an almost desperate attempt to regain what was lost, you pace back and forth, feeling the loss of that connection with each and every step. Suddenly, you stop mid-step when you hear a voice from the phone. There's a sigh of relief. As you have known, you have, quote, reached your calling. There is a sense of clarity, for now you are in perfect alignment with source. You've made the connection. You have achieved oneness with the other caller. Now, I love this example because they took something that was so commonplace years ago, that commercial, can you hear me now? And they bring that to to such a level where you realize being one with source and being part of all that is and that you, that beautiful unity when you have reached your calling. We could actually go through this paragraph several times and see all sorts of analogies. But let's go to number three. You're traveling in the cold, the dark. You feel dense and heavy trudging along. You do not know anything else for this is just the way it is, the way it has always been. Then out of nowhere, you sense a change. It is nothing tangible, but you for some unknown reason are drawn to travel a different path. As you embark upon this path, your step quickens until you find yourself running towards some great unknown that just feels right. You go with it. It's like you have been this large chunk of iron ore 
finding itself mysteriously moving toward a blacksmith's forge. You're carried by hidden tongues toward this warm, unknown source of strength and power. These hidden tongues have guided you away from your home and leading you to an unknown adventure. You are thrust into the open flames of the blacksmith's forge. Your cold, hard, dense body, what you have always identified as you, begins to change. You are no longer your cold, rigid, former self. You are malleable, flexible. The flames have allowed your molecular structure to change. Your essence is changing. And almost surprisingly, you are allowing this change. These changes are occurring by this unknown yet familiar force that has awakened you from your deep slumber and has drawn you to it. It feels so right. The end result is that your true essence reveals itself. You have become transformed from a cold, dense piece of heavy metal to a gorgeous sculpture, a piece of art. Your essence is now able to shine forth there has been an energetic change in your basic structure, in your DNA. You are art. Your presence, your essence, evokes a sense of love and appreciation from those surrounding you. You inspire awe from those who see you. You yourself are in awe of your present state of grace. You give heartfelt gratitude to those invisible yet familiar forces that guided you upon this most sacred and divine path of transformation. In this state of expanded awareness, you begin to experience life on a quantum level where as Einstein reported, spooky action takes place. Through experiencing these most sacred states of awareness and closeness to source, there is finally the recognition of oneness with all. An entanglement where we realize changes in one will affect changes in all, for we truly are just one. We are plugged in. We have arrived home as we allow our trueness to shine forth. We honor and open to this new awareness and allow our hearts to carry us forth upon this most holy path back to the oneness of all. I ended by writing, I humbly give gratitude and love for these beautiful messages that were gifted to me. Again, if this was just me writing this, I would have said, thanks, thank you. But imagine this, these two events were both so significant and they happened on the same day at a Monroe Institute program. And these were not even during an exercise, but they were the result of the exercises, not only from Exploration 27, but from all of the Monroe Sound Science that I've listened to. That includes during local chapter meetings or in the quiet of my own home through Monroe Institute's Expand app. In real time, you might not be able to pinpoint exactly how you changed. I, I couldn't, but you change. Monroe Institute taught me to know that I am more than my physical body. Embracing that set the framework for all of my experiences. 
I ask you to suspend your beliefs just for a few moments. Embrace that you are more than your physical body. This is the basis of Bob Monroe's research and work to know, to truly know that we are more than these physical frames that we inhabit. So with that, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Feel free to share, comment, and subscribe. Remember, my mantra for this year is kindness matters. Bring in the energy of kindness and see how your life will change. So thank you for joining me and until next time.